Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of All. In this tutorial we're going to have a look at how to make alpha textures from photos to be able to use them as brushes. So I've got a very simple setup here. I've just got a plain cube that's been scaled and all I'm going to do is try to put some textures onto this. Obviously in real life I'd make something a little bit more well shaped but I want to add some rock texture to this shape. Now there are several starting points for this. What's great about this technique is you can literally use photos. So if you take some photos of a cliff, this will work really well. But as I don't have any cliffs near me, I'm gonna go online. And here all I've done is typed into Google rock texture, and I'm just gonna find a rock texture that I think suitable. And this one looks quite nice. I've got a rock texture here that's free to use from a website called Vision Pick. Haven't used them before, but either way, I'm just gonna right click here and save the image. And I'm just gonna call this rock. Now once that's downloaded, I do want to have a quick look at this, so I'm gonna open it up. And this is always worth doing to find out if there's any problems with your image, have a bit of a better look at it. And straight off, I can see there are a few problems. For a start, we've got different bits of vegetation here. I don't want that. So let's just crop those out. So gonna get rid of those. And I want to get rid of the ones here as well. So I've now got my rock texture and this bit here that's very dark also might cause a bit of a problem. So I'm gonna edit that bit out too, somewhere to about there. That looks nice at this point. So I'm just gonna save that as a copy and I'm just gonna call that rock cropped. So I've still got my original version and let's save that. Now the next thing I'm gonna need is a bit of software to do this and there is some free software that is very, very good. It is called Materialize. So if I again go back into Google and just type in Materialize software and you can go into this website. I will put a link in the description. Come to downloads and you can download this so you can make your own alphas. Now I will say there's something to be aware of here. Once you've got this downloaded, you'll have a folder that looks like this. And importantly, it's got Materialize in it. You don't install this, you just double click on it to open it. But you've also got this Unity Player application extension and you need that to be in the same folder. So what you can't do is drag this onto your desktop if you don't drag the Unity Player as well. It doesn't like being in a different place. So double click on this and this will start up Materialize. And you end up with a screen like this. Now what we're gonna do is bring in this image as what we call a diffuse map. And we're gonna convert this into a height map. And this is a really simple process with this. You can do this in other software. I've heard of people using GIMP to do this. I just find this sort of does pretty much everything for you. So we're just gonna go through this. And a lot of this I'm not even gonna talk about. We're not doing any of these other bits over here. We don't need any of that. All I'm gonna do is come up to diffuse map and click open, which is the O. And then I'm gonna open up my image and click select. And you can see here we've got our image, which is our rocks. And at the moment this is colored. And we want an alpha texture. And alpha textures are just black and white images. So all I do is come over to here to a height map. This is the other word for an alpha texture. And I click create. And this just turns this into my black and white image. And you'll also notice that this has blurred it slightly. Now this is really important to have this image blurred. If you don't, then the extremes between the light and the dark are too much and it's going to make a horrible mess of your project. Now over here, we've got some options. I generally don't play around with these. The only one that I do sometimes play around with is the contrast. Other than that, I pretty much leave these alone, but you're welcome to play around with them to your heart's desire and, and see what they do. But the only three that I do is these. Now what these do is these set the amount of blurring that you've got. So you can start with details. This essentially has no blurring or very little blurring. And you can see that it looks like a black and white image of this original version. Now I'm actually gonna save a copy of this just so you can see why we don't use this and the problems that it's gonna cause. So how we save this is we just come down, click set as height map, and you can see it now appears here. And then I'm going to click the S for save. And I'm just gonna call this alpha rock. And I'm gonna say no blur. So I know what it is. And later on, to be perfectly honest, I'm gonna delete it. So I'm gonna select that and save it. And then we're gonna make our version that's gonna be better for this. So we want our blurred version. And you can either go for default, which is gonna be quite blurred or displaced, which is going to be very blurred. Now, depending on the resolution of your image is gonna depend on which one you want to use here, but essentially you just want to play around between the two. 
For now, I'm gonna go with default and we'll see what it looks like. I might come back and use that displaced version. Now, importantly, do notice that this hasn't changed the height map at this point. So if you click save, you're just saving another version of what was already there. You need to click set as height map and then that's going to set this and then you can save it. So I'm gonna call this alpha rock and then I'm gonna just call this blur. So back to Blender and let's bring this in as a texture brush. Now we did have a look at how to do this in the last video. So if you want to have a look at that, it's about sculpting wood. There is a link in the top right hand corner. And all I'm gonna do is go into sculpt mode, select my brush, and I'm going to change this to be a texture. So I'm gonna click on the texture icon here, change the mapping from new to area plane. That's important. Click new. And then we've got this texture here with nothing on it. So I need to assign this texture. I'm actually gonna call this rock. And I can either click here to bring up my texture mapping or I can come in here, which will bring it up. And then I just go to open and find my texture. So I'm gonna click on the one that's gonna work better. And then I'll demonstrate the problem afterwards. So open the image here. We've got this here. And I want to importantly change the stroke to be anchored. Now at this point, I could fiddle around with this strength, so that can be important, but well, let's just see what this looks like straight off. And in actual fact, I just realized I haven't actually remeshed this cube, so I need to do that now. So let's press Shift and R, and we can see the size of my squares here for the remeshing. I want this relatively fine, so I've got a decent smooth texture. I'm gonna go to about 0.09. Let's see what that looks like, and then Control and R, to do the remesh. So I'm just gonna come up here and put on my statistics. So at the moment we've got about three million faces. My computer can handle that, so that should be fine. And let's start bringing in this texture. So all I do is I click down, drag out, and we've got my rock texture. And that's looking pretty good. Looks like rocks. And what I can do is just add several versions on top of each other to try and make this look a little bit interesting and I can obviously move these around so that we don't have just the same texture repeatedly. We've got this overlap and it becomes a little bit less recognizable. Now, just to be clear what this is doing, if we come into the side view or from the bottom up, you can see that what's happened is these white bits have been raised up and the darker bits have been left relatively unraised. You can, if you choose to, change the brush type so for example, I could turn this to a minus, and then what this is gonna do is invert into this. So now the white bits are going in, and the blacker bits are staying relatively unchanged again. So whatever happens, the white bits on the texture are the parts that move. Now I've just realized I haven't done something, and if I rotate around to the back, you're probably gonna see a problem here, and yep. So this is probably not what I want. At the moment, it's affected both faces, that could cause me a lot of issues. So I'm just gonna control and Z to get rid of those. This is relatively simple to fix. All I come to here is my tool menu and I'm just gonna go back down and where it says advanced, I want this to affect the front faces only, which means it's only gonna affect the faces that I'm front onto. Oops, I just realized I'm still in negative. I want this positive. So there we go. And now it hasn't affected the back. If I want this more extreme, I can increase the strength. If I want this less extreme, I can bring the strength down. For example, if I wanted something a bit more subtle, I could do that. And you'll notice this doesn't stick out as far. Now for 3D printing, generally want this to be quite extreme. Something like this would be quite good. And actually a lot of these minor little texture bits here are probably gonna be a little bit too much. We don't really need this while well. this looks good on a computer it's not really gonna come out in print. It's more likely to cause you problems. So what you can do here is come to materialized and come to something like displaced, and this will make this more blurred. So what I'm gonna do is set this as a height map, save this, and I'm gonna call this blur two, because it's more blurred. And let's do a quick comparison of what these looks like. So just coming back in here, I'm gonna do this one here. So this is my standard level of blur. In fact, I'm gonna set this to 0.5 for all of them so we can compare this. So that's my standard level of displacement. Then I'm just gonna change this texture brush. I'm gonna to come to the texture here, get rid of it, and I'm gonna open up 
my not blurred version. And the settings are exactly the same here. I'm just going to do this here. And what you'll see is that this has made a much more extreme version. And you'll notice that this is really quite extreme on the positives and the not so positive bits. It doesn't really look that recognizable as rock. Whereas here, we've got something that's a little bit more recognizable. Okay, and this is because the darks and the lights aren't blurred into each other enough because we haven't blurred this image. So actually crispness is not something we want in this image. We want to blur it. And if I now come down to the bottom and then change this out again and do the more extremely blurred version, again, exactly the same settings. And I'm gonna do that here. And actually, I think you'll agree for 3D printing, this is probably gonna be the better texture. It looks much smoother. It's got less problems with it, yet it's still recognizable as rock. But that's obviously a choice for you and how you want to make this material look. But I generally find this slightly more blurred version is going to be better for rock, whereas that is probably maybe going to be better for something like some pockmarked skin or something like that. Now, there's a few more things that I just wanted to mention really quickly. And the first is that despite this image going all the way to the edge here, you'll notice that Blender attempts to blur this out at the sides as standard. And if I come to the brush settings here and scroll all the way down, I can control this by looking at the fall off. And I can also do this up here where we've got exactly the same options. And you'll notice that this is using the smooth option, which is why we get this smoothing off. Now we can also pick other options. For example, we could have constant. Now for this, this is not going to look good, but it's going to be important for something else. And what that does, and you can see this from here, is essentially it uses the alpha texture all the way to the edge of our sphere, and then it stops. If I do that here, you'll notice, or you'll see what that does. It literally uses it to the edge, and this is going to look rubbish. However, it is very important for certain textures or alphas that we might want. So if I was doing something a little bit more hard surface, this might be quite important. So here I've just come to a website that does alpha textures. They're actually for ZBrush, but they work just the same. And if I come down, you've got this option of different ones and they are free. And I'm gonna to go to industrial. And let's have a look at these industrial ones. I mean, we've got a button here, that could be quite fun. In fact, let's grab that. So I'm just gonna download this. And it's going to download it as a zip file. So all I want to do is go into this, show it in the folder. And all I'm going to do is extract this out. And I just want to take this button and I'm just going to put this into the folder. And I can delete that folder there. So I've got my button. So let's go and have a look at this in Blender. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn my fall off back to our automatic smooth. And I'm going to change this texture out for my button. You can see I've got other textures and other rocks here that are available. Click on that, open image, and now I can set this and make my button. And this is looking pretty good, but it's quite domed. I probably don't want my button looking like this, especially seeing as actually according to this, you'll notice that these edges are whiter than the bit in the middle, so it shouldn't look like this. It's looking like this because of this fall off being smooth. If I change this to constant, what that means is this is going to actually be a more fair representation of this alpha texture. And what would have caused a problem here won't cause a problem because the outside of this texture is entirely black. So if I now do this here, we've got my button and you'll notice that the outer edge actually dips in here. This might be a little bit strong. I could bring down my strength slightly and try that again. But we've got this nice button texture here. So depending on what alpha texture you're using, having this fall off as either constant or smooth is quite important to allow you to blend this into your project appropriately. The final thing that I'm going to mention, which was something that came up on the last project, and while this isn't true here, sometimes you want to have something where your darker objects, for example, your cracks, actually stick into the object. So here, I'm quite happy with the fact that my rocks stick out. It makes a good texture. 
But what if I wanted this to be something else where I actually want the cracks to stick into my texture? Now, for a start, this actually probably caused some problems because this object's quite thin, but we'll have a look at how this works. And this is quite simple in Materialize. All I want to do is whatever my contrast is, and actually I'm gonna to go to the default one so that it's a little bit more extreme. Whatever my final contrast is here, so 1.5, if I just turn this to a minus and hit enter, you'll notice this is going to invert the colors. And now all the cracks or the things that were the cracks are going to be the bits that are now white. They're effectively gonna be the bits that move. I'm gonna set this as the height map. You can see it's changed here. Let's save that. So I've got alpha rock blur, and I'm gonna call this inverted and select that. And let's quickly come over here and see what this is gonna do. So in theory, this should look like this, but now it's gonna be in reverse. So I'm gonna open this up, go to my inverted, open that, make sure my fall off is smooth, and let's put this next to it and see how this looks. Let's up that strength back to something around five. So now you'll notice that the cracks are the bits that are sticking out. Now I don't want that, I want my cracks to stick in. So I'm gonna undo that, press minus, and now when I do this, you'll notice that this still looks like rock, but now it has pushed into the mesh. You'll also notice here that it's hitting the back face, which is a slight problem, but that's because this is so thin. So do be aware of that. But now it still looks like rock. If we have a look here, you can still see the same texture. For example, you can see this line here and that line there. They're still sticking in, but that's because I've used this as a minus with an inverted texture. So that's quite important if you want to make a texture that's gonna push into your object, but still is recognizable in its original form. So a lot to digest there, hopefully some things you found useful. I very rarely see this bit about inverting the alpha and I think that's strange because it's so important for things where you want to have a fixed size. For example, this shape here, I don't want it sticking out. For example, if I was making something like, I don't know, cracked concrete or something like that. So just bear that in mind. This inverting of the alphas is quite important depending on the texture that you want to make.